Good morning again to everyone. Um, for those of you who are new to us, your bulletin, the first page, is the table of contents. It tells you where to go in the Book of Common Prayer, which is the red book in front of you. And our service begins on page 299. 299. Blessings be to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There is one body, one spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of our people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Please be seated for the lessons. Our readings can be found in our program on page three, starting on page three. This is a reading from the, from the Acts. Those who had been baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers all came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate the food with glad and generous hearts praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Psalm 23, we'll read it from the asterisk. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not he makes me lie down in green pastures. And leads me beside the he revives my soul. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. A reading from 1 Peter. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. The commi he committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, 
so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, according to John. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the, the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but will run away from him because they do not know the voice of the stranger. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep do not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O God, my strength and my redeemer. Please be seated. Now the gospel today follows after a great conflict that Jesus had had with the religious leaders of Jerusalem regarding who he was. The answer Jesus gave them turned them into an angry mob that tried a feeble attempt, if I may say so myself, to stone him. Then to make matters worse, before leaving the temple, Jesus shows kindness to a blind man, a man that was born blind. You remember that story? Yeah, just after insulting the Pharisees, he comes across this blind man in the temple near the pool of Shalom. And there, out of kindness, he healed this man and gave him sight. Now you think a man who's been begging and born blind, everyone would be happy to see that, hey, someone blessed him with sight. 
But no, the response of the religious leaders showed that they were very unhelpful and cruel to this blind man, his parents, and the community in general. Their actions made it necessary for Jesus to talk about the contrast between his heart and how he worked as a leader for righteousness of the people and how the religious leaders of the time worked and showed their hatefulness. So Jesus begins his lessons by describing who he is not. In the ancient world, the political and spiritual leaders were often called shepherds. And Jesus, however, is explaining here from the beginning that not everyone found among the sheep is indeed a true shepherd. Some are really thieves and robbers in disguise. One mark of being a thief and a robber is how they gain entry into the sheepfold. Those who climbed over the walls to get into the sheepfold care only about themselves and not for the sheep. They care only for their gain and what power they can get from stealing. As a shepherd of the people, we must always have the well-being of the sheep at heart rather than our own well-being. We only have to look at politics today and see how the shepherds of this country have gone astray where so many of them, though elected by people, their main concern is for the lobbyists, the people who support them and give them money rather than the good of all their constituents. So as I earlier said in the discussion takes place directly Jesus's, after Jesus' healing of the man who was blind from birth. And you can read that story in John chapter 9. Here, Jesus presents a metaphor that is hard to miss. You remember, as I said, the Pharisees had chose to interrogate the blind man. And they are supposed to be the shepherds of Israel. Their God-given job is to care for, protect, and nourish the people of Israel. But instead, they take this blind man from their community, not someone else's from their community. And because he refused to tell a lie, and because he refused to say that Jesus was a sinner, they were ready to expel him. They were more concerned about guarding their power and authority than about the well-being of this person who was just healed. And because of that selfish concern, they excommunicated him from the community. They drove him out. That's what it means. When you were driven out from the community in those days, you were excommunicated. Just to give you exactly what that means, again, excommunication in ancient times is, not an, is, is the isolation of a person, not only religiously, but in every other way possible. No one in his family, none of his friends, would ever dare go near him in fear of angering the leaders. For most of his friends and family then, he was considered dead. I mean, it was such a frightening prospect that the parents of the blind man, during their own interrogation, dodged the question that the Jewish leaders kept throwing for him and referred it back to the blind man, their son. They said, he is of age, let him answer. For they feared excommunication themselves. So in the end, he was cut off. He was cut off from his community. Just think about this. A man who was blind all his life a man who sat by a pool begging for money for his only subsistence. A man who depended on his mother and father to give him food and shelter at the end of the day. On the first moment that he's given sight. The first moment that he's blessed with sight. His community excommunicates him and leaves him without support. 
Can you imagine that? It is the most uncaring action that anyone can do. And it's this sort of uncaring action and characteristic that Jesus is pointing out when he says that they are not shepherds, but thieves and bandits who care nothing about the sheep. The prophet Ezekiel also rebukes the shepherds of Israel when he says in chapter 4 that the religious leaders fed themselves rather than the flock. They ate the curds and clothed themselves with the wool and slaughtered the choice animals. But they never took care of the flock. The leaders did not strengthen the weak. They did not heal the sick. They did not bound up the injured. They did not bring in the strays or go looking for the lost. So God in turn stopped their exploitation and took over the job of shepherd. He did this when the word became flesh and lived among us and began looking for his sheep. He began on his own looking for the lost of Israel to bring them back to the fold. Having already restored this man's sight, Jesus goes and seeks him out when he hears that he had been expelled from the synagogue and brings this man into his community of followers. For the blind man's salvation was not only received in a physical sight, but also now in a spiritual sight. For recognizing who Jesus is and believing in him, he became part of Jesus' community. He followed the voice of Jesus because he can see in him new life, a new love. He can see a true shepherd. His days of isolation were over. He was now a valued member of Jesus' flock and cared for and protected. Now, I know for many of us today, this whole sheep and shepherd thing is a little bit confusing. You know, so let me explain a little bit. There are, sheep herding is not the common job anymore. You know, most of us don't pick up our staff and go outside and, here boy, let's go. Or call to sheep or even sing as it used to be done. We don't do that anymore, so most of us don't understand it. So let me give you a little bit of taste. In ancient Israel, the ground was poor and rocky. And the only thing it was really suited for was the cultivation of sheep. So sheep herding became the common occupation. The collection of wool was a very important thing because you made a lot of stuff from it. Clothing, sheets, robes, so forth. So it was an important part of the industry. Shepherds often worked with the same sheep for a number of years and thus developed a very strong relationship with their sheep. And everyone in the time of Jesus knew a little bit about sheep herding, so it would be the perfect metaphor to tell a story and teach the lesson. Everyone knew that a solitary shepherd watching over a small flock would have a small keep, for, or called a sheepfold, which was made up of walls. And if you imagine these here being the walls, it would be piled up as high as here with just this narrow opening in front of it. And in this narrow opening, that's where the shepherd will put his bed. And so no sheep or intruder can enter the sheepfold unless it passed over him. He, in front of that little door opening, the opening that's the only opening in a complete circle of fold. He was the door. He was the entryway. So when Jesus says, I am the door and the gatekeeper, that was what he meant. He meant he was the shepherd laying across the opening so that no one can come in, so that no predator can attack his sheep unless it first came by him. It's important to note that this because people get confused with this metaphor. And I've heard many ask, if Jesus is a shepherd, how can he be the gate? Well, that is how. As him, as the man laying across the one and only opening to the sheepfold, he was not only the shepherd, but the gate as well. His purpose was to guard against all that threatens, all thieves, bandits, wolves, or whatever threatened his sheep. He, the shepherd, was the gate that protected them. In our world today, there are many wolves 
Many bandits and false shepherds who seek to steal, kill, and destroy. Many of them try to enter the keepers' wolves in sheep clothing. Or better yet, as wolves in shepherd clothing. Many of them come out to us and they preach homilies about life and abundance and how great they can make our lives and how abundant we can live. They talk about their continual health and wealth and success and how they can make that grow if you only believe in what they tell you to believe. And they guarantee that if your faith is strong, you will be made abundant and rich. You will have great health. You will amass many possessions. They tell you that if you vote a certain way, your stock portfolio will get bigger. Your retirement fund will look fat and your family will prosper. But that message doesn't always grow for everyone. That message usually doesn't go beyond a 1%. And many of those who put their stock in those preacher usually end up brokenhearted and without faith. And the only person who gets rich is that preacher who we hear about flying around in their own one, their own, you know, planes, their own private shuttles, and they need this to save the masses. Give me a thousand dollars or I will drop dead. I need that money for my Mercedes Benz because that helps me save people. Those are the false shepherds that Jesus is talking about. But the abundance that Jesus promised us is completely different. John chapter, sees, John chapter 3 says it the best. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone, everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. The abundance that Jesus promised is life that begins here and now and will continue growing. And the more we get to know God, the more we become in fellowship with him, the more we would see who truly cares about us, and we will in turn receive that eternal life. It is a life in a community that finds us security, that finds us nourishment. It is a security where the flock is always taken care of. Is it a life that abounds, that gives us value, that endures way beyond death? This is... This life is there for everyone to achieve, not just the first 1%. And it is governed not by wealth, but by our personal relationship with Jesus the Christ. It is a relationship that is based on our faith and those of us that truly believe. It is a relationship between a shepherd and a sheep. In Jesus' time, in the Jewish culture, people considered a person's name to be more than just a simple label. When you were named, you were named with care because they believed that that name expressed something of that person's essential character. So what Jesus is saying is that when he knows his sheep by name, he knows them with a special intimacy. An intimacy that is usually have with the person and the person who named them. It is the intimacy of a parent and his child. Jesus emphasizes that his sheep knows his voice and that he is a shepherd. So he's telling us that he is in almost each and every one of us by name. When he calls us, he calls us by name because he has that intimacy with us. He wants that intimacy with us. But intimacy is a two-way thing. And just as our God wants to love us, he wants us in turn to want to love and get to know him. So to build that intimacy, we have to do something as well. We have to love. God wants to know us the way a parent knows his child. Now a lot has been written about how sheep are rather dumb animals. And that without a shepherd they will not necessarily find the food and water that they need. But the one thing, the, however, the one thing that Jesus emphasizes about sheep 
is that they know the voice of their shepherd. Above all other things, they know who to follow. Whatever else can be said about their mental capacities, they have that in their favor. They recognize the voice of the one who cares for them. They follow their shepherd and will not ever follow a stranger. They know better. They know who cares for them. Today we have a candidate for baptism. And when I look at that candidate, I remember my daughter at that age. Harrison cannot yet talk or defend himself yet. But the one thing he knows better than anything is the sound of mommy and daddy's voice. Right? He knows that. When mommy and daddy talks, he's alert. Oh, yeah. There's my food. There's my supper. There's my warmth. There's my love. And at those voice, he jumps. He jumps at the voice of grandma, too, because he knows that's spoiling time. You know, that, that's when I get all the nice, sweet stuff. I get all the loves and hugs and kisses. So when grandma calls, he jumps too. I, I just throw that in there. That voice means safety. That voice means loved. That voice means to be happy. But Harrison, I want you to know that there's another voice that you will hear in time. If you're not already hearing it, most of us can't tell what a baby hears. But there's a voice out there that is calling you also. A voice that welcomes you to the community. A voice that will be full of love and a voice that will guide you for the rest of your life. Until you can answer for yourself, your parents and godparents today will vow to teach you about that voice and to teach you about the love that that voice will have for you and how to follow that wonderful voice that we all in this community follow. The voice of God that calls us ever so lovingly. Harrison, I want you to know that you are indeed a child of God and an inheritor of the kingdom of heaven. And our God, our Lord, calls you, just as he calls each and every one of us, to enter into a relationship with him. And when you have reached that relationship, when you have forged that strong relationship, his call will lead you into the kingdom. My brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus is the door to our salvation. He has said that many a time to us. I mean, do you remember your scripture? In the scripture he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We cannot be saved by science, technology, Money, possessions, education, or psychiatry, or any of those things. These things, I must say, do make our lives easier and do offer healing. And sometimes they will give us abundance in this life. But those things, if you make them your, the voice you follow, will not lead you to everlasting life. They will only lead you astray. Their call is self-centered. It is not about your benefit. The voice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is calling us to come to him. It is calling us to community. Do you recognize that voice? When you sit in your small, quiet rooms, do you hear that voice calling you? Do you hear that voice above all the other voices yelling and screaming in your life today? That voice that is focused only on your welfare. That voice that is focused on your everlasting life. That voice that is focused on loving you. That voice cares about one thing. And Jesus' voice is focused on the welfare of his sheep. He's concerned with your welfare and mine. Do you hear that voice calling? Do you hear that soft, gentle voice calling you to come home to him? Do you hear him in your lives today? It's a soft voice calling softly and tenderly. There's a wonderful hymn that I learned as a child with my grandmother through Jim Reeves. And it's a voice that always reminds us, him that reminds me of who's calling me and whose voice I should follow. Excuse my voice, but I'll sing a little to you. It goes like this. 
Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home, come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O oh sinner, come home. We'll continue to the font where we will bring our new member into the church. <clears throat> Ooh, hello, my friend. <laughs> nice to meet you again. <laughs> Everyone page to turn to page 301 in your Book of Common Prayer, 301. Okay, sponsors, the first line is yours on page 301. I present... Do you share, do you desire to be baptized? No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will with God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of the world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. Do you affirm your renunciation of evil? I do. I do. Will you who witness these vows do in your power, to all in your power, to support this person in the life of Christ. We will. Let us join with those who commit themselves to Christ and renew our baptism confident. Page 304. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will. 
Will you preserve, pre persevere in resisting evil? And whatever you fall from sin, repent and return to the Lord. Will you proclaim my word and example, the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Let us pray now for the, for the candidate for Harrison, who will receive the sacrament of new birth and will be renewed by his commitment to Christ. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear Open Harrison's heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear Fill Harrison with your loyalty and life and giving spirit. Keep Harrison the faith and communion of the Holy Church. Lord, Teach Harrison to love others in the power of spirit. Lord, Send Harrison into this world as a witness of your love when he's grown. Lord, and bring Harrison to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, Grant all those who are baptized in the death of Jesus Christ, the Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage of, in Egypt and into the land of promise. In your Son, Jesus Christ, we received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin and into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in the joy and obedience of your Son, we bring into this fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray to you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again and may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Can you hold this for me? <laughs> what a wonderful pop. <laughs> there we go. I baptize you, Harrison, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water, by the Holy Spirit, we have baptized upon these thy servants for forgiveness of sins. And we have raised them in the new life of grace. So stay in our soul, Lord, in your Holy Spirit, and give him the acquiring and discerning heart and the courage and the will to persevere in your spirit and to know you and to love you, and the gift of joy and the wonder of all your works. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome.
Harrison, you are sealed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And you are marked as Christ's own now and forever. Amen. Amen. Come on, guy. We have some work to do. Everybody, come on. Come on, guys. Isn't he adorable? <laughs> St. Stephen's Episcopal Church, let us welcome our new member, a member of Christ community, Harrison. Let us welcome him into our fold, now and forever. Harrison, welcome to this community of love. We are here to guide and to protect you as much as your family is. Three cheers for Harrison. Hip, hip. Hooray. Hip, hip. Hooray. Hip, hip. Hooray. Hooray. Good job, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, there you are. For the godparents, this candle that we light, we light in remembrance of Harrison's baptism and his being brought into the world as a child of God and an inheritor of the kingdom of heaven. On the anniversary of his baptism, you are invited to light this candle every year to remind you of the commitment you made towards his growth. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another in peace and love. Are there any announcements today? Go ahead. Sunday services on May 28th, the day before Memorial Day Parade. We're going to have a special gratitude service for all military personnel 
and for first responders, and for the men and women who gave their lives. <coughs> Starts at 10 a.m., and uh, it will be food, or a, a, a refreshments, refreshments <laughs> afterward. I, I, I was given an aberration of, of some sorts. Anyhow, you're all invited, 10 o'clock service here. Please come, thank you. Are there any other announcements? Going still May 20th. Orders are supposed to be in by the 16th online. 16th online. Please make sure you do that. Anything else? Then walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice of God. The hymn for the sorry, there's no hymn for the offertory. We have a choir still in section. So our choir will sing an anthem for us. Sure. 
We continue our service on page 361 in your books of common prayer. 361. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly, we, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who has sacrificed for us and has taken away the sins of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full, full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only eternal Son, to share in our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer to you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food of drink, of new and ending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Lord Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him, and in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Thank you. Lamb of God, have mercy. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Christians are welcome to the table. You just have to come up. If you like the bread and the wine, you can take it and you can entink in the cup that Sally has. Those of you who do not want to entink, just cross your hands in front of you. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
found on page 365, 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. To the so, Lord. Amen. In the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. The recessional hymn, hymn number 646, 646, verses 1 and 2, verses 5 and 6. One, two, five, and six. Sing ye faithful, sing with gladness. in your heart and may you follow the journey on your journeys through everlasting life. Amen. 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 Have a wonderful and peaceful week.